Welcome to another video. Today's topic is pass through filters or apply functions. These are functions that are used to create some uh, script or insert some script into our SQL to create some customized filtering options. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm just going to open the new metric editor and show you the kind of uh, customization that I can use with apply functions. So let's just create, let me just show you at the beginning the possible uh, apply functions. Apply ag, apply comparison, and apply simple are the three most commonly used. Apply logic and apply OLAP are not really that used or unnecessary. Or necessary. Apply simple and apply comparison most used. Apply ag is when you're working with facts directly. And all of them use the same kind of structure and arguments. Again, it's very critical for you to understand that whatever you type in within an apply simple is uh, specific to your database. So if you type something in for a, uh, an Oracle database, it might be different than what you need to type in for a Teradata database, for instance. So you have to make sure that you know the SQL specific uh, script that you can use for your database. And if you're not sure, you can go to your source, your database instance, and double check. In my case, the tutorial is built on Access. Access is probably the only one that is very limited with these codes. There's not much you can do with it. Uh, but uh, with other SQL databases, there's a lot of, you can do with optimizing and with kind of creating some uh, on-the-fly filtering. So if we look at this example, I'm just going to go ahead and type a simple uh, apply simple always the brackets and the quotations for the arguments followed by the arguments so I'm just gonna create an apply simple and do a case statement this is a numeric value where I'm trying to break it into different cases obviously you can use the uh, in this case a case formula without using apply simple but there are some <clears throat> situations where you prefer to do this so that this case argument is placed in the SQL pass rather than performing a case after collecting the data. So in this case, you could use this, which would operate on a fact or on a uh, metric. And you notice that the uh, quotations are around the script and then followed by a comma and then the argument, which in this case is revenue. Once you validate, it'll allow you to choose from multiple uh, arguments if the name is reoccurring in your database. Also, uh, you could use um, an attribute, but if you want to use an attribute, you, want, you still have to use the form specific. So it's either, in this case, either an ID or a description or whatever other form. Unlike metrics and facts where you only need the name of the column or the name of the metric in an attribute you also need to specify the ID or the, I mean, the form. Again, once you try to validate if their name is reoccurring multiple places, it'll ask you which one would you want to do or select. And depending on your need, typically you might want, you're selecting a metric, but you could be doing this for a fact as well. Apply ag becomes necessarily when you're using the uh, fact rather than the metric. Because remember, if you're selecting a fact, it's not going to know how to do something like a case on a single item. You have to tell it how to aggregate. So if you're using the fact, you're going to have to give your, um, your value or your argument, which is the zero argument, a, uh, a subtotal function. In this case, I'm using sum for my zero argument. And in this case, I would be using the revenue fact in this case specifically. And just make sure that, you know, apply ag, uh, use a subtotal with the argument if you're using a fact. Okay. So I'm just going over some more examples. And here's an example of what if I wanted to create the metric simply just like some revenue and I wanted to put this condition in the filter itself which this is more common approach 
we go and create the filter and if we need to customize the filter we just customize the filter first before we apply it, apply it to the metric so either you build the filter within the metric like i showed you earlier with the apply simple or you create the apply simple in a filter and then apply it or as a condition to a metric if you're going to build a filter now we're not going to use the apply simple what you would do you would you would be using is the apply comparison which is similar in structure but this time it allows you to compare arguments or combinations of arguments and again it is sql specific it's specific to your database so let's go back and edit this the apply comparison would need two parts uh, that the, the that your sql or your code would have to be running some comparison or some uh, validation of an argument before it would pass it into uh, your report. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a system date. So I'm just saying I want an argument where if it's less than yesterday's date and I want the, let me just go ahead and choose one of these attributes. The system day and again because I'm using a, an attribute I need to add the form I'm going to use the ID in this case okay notice it gave me a red error before I inserted the form because I assumed I was making doing something wrong when I applied an attribute okay so this is going to enable me to return the first argument for day ID, which is less than system ID minus one. You could also do something like concatenating uh, your arguments before comparing them, looking for them in a selection. So this allows you to pick up something like a list comparison. So I'm saying, you know, argument one, concatenated with argument two or zero and one uh, matching a set which is came in, coming from a selection and this is column one column two from a specific table uh, and I can add a where clause too so notice when I use the comparison and I'm comparing the left hand zero concatenate to one and to one and then I was able to use in rather than an equal or less than or greater than. This is a list. So I'm saying, you know, this item has to be belong to this selection or this kind of uh, list that I'm uh, pulling from. So syntax error here will produce uh, bad results for you. So it's very, very sensitive uh, to this structure. You always have to use the brackets and the quotations. And if you're going to use a selection, make sure you have the selection argument within brackets too, and make sure the syntax is appropriate for your database. If you hit validate when you're doing something like this, it's only going to test the structure, and but it's it will not actually it will not validate what's in your quotations because it's assuming that this is not a microstrategy script and this is a database specific. So if you make an error in your argument or your script you will not find out uh, in, from the editor you will find out at runtime when you get either errors or bad results okay and here I'm just playing around with different options and I'm showing that you can nest more sequels etc you can keep getting as creative as you want with these arguments the apply comparison is very handy especially when sometimes it's produces the results you want with less number of nested filters or nested combinations of filters. This will achieve a quick result within one line, basically. And again, there's many ways you can do this. You can even use things like uh, ranges and between to compare uh, for date ranges, for instance, this comes in handy or for value ranges. You could also embed uh, prompts in this argument rather than just uh, attributes and metrics so that you can have the user 
entered prompt play a role in this comparison so in essence apply the filter becomes a prompted filter in this case so just remember to keep the sequence from 0 1 2 but use an e if your uh, prompt is returning attribute elements and uh, just again uh, be careful about the sequence be careful that the syntax use the question mark use uh, the correct spelling of your uh, prompts that you're embedding you have to have created these prompts before writing the script you cannot just write the script and later on create the prompts everything has to be consistent with objects already existing in your database and here we see the and uh, for the between you could also do uh, date math depending on again this is very specific to your database uh, some databases will allow you to do uh, date formulas like date add some have other form forms of uh, date functions if you're not sure just google your database specific uh, function that you need like how to add days for an oracle or for teradate and you will get these form functions these are not my strategy specific these are all database specific okay you could also create uh, security filters that use these uh, apply formulas let's just build an example quickly an advanced qualification so i can get the custom and i'm just going to use an apply comparison but this time I'm going to actually utilize the user uh, login, which is um, uh, a system uh, created object. So I'm just going to verify, like if I'm creating a security on a table where the tab there's a column that matches the user ID. And I want to make sure that this user ID, uh, this user only accesses uh, the, the rows on this table that match the user ID. For example, if I'm using something like a customer or a vendor, I want to make sure that the uh, user ID for that vendor is uh, belongs to that table. So I will have a column matching the user logins in that table. And then I compare the user logins uh, to that column uh, whenever I use this uh, security filter. So. Uh, this way, if the secure filter is applied to my report or my reports, then I'm guaranteed to always apply the security filter on the tables that contain that column. And here I'm specifying that this table, which table it is to use for this apply comparison. So here the user login has to match and the user login is prompted. So when you log into MicroStrategy or user logs into MicroStrategy, that is the user login. I didn't have to create the user login prompt. I had to just use it because it's already existing in the system. And notice how sensitive the uh, script is. Sometimes uh, I create errors so easily because I'm using the wrong form or the wrong format, etc. Use the validate, it'll confirm your structure again it will only confirm your structure it will not confirm the what's inside the quotations so will, there's part of it that's very tricky because you don't know how to debug what's inside the quotations until you're at runtime unless you're really experienced in the database that you're utilizing most of these formulas are easy to write once you get your hands uh, on them and you start playing with them but it takes a while to kind of get familiar with them and no matter how experienced you are with them you're always going to make errors so just you know be patient when using these they're very powerful but they're very cumbersome at times